If you are new, my name is Ashley Briggs. I'm a personal trainer. I make fitness, health, and lifestyle videos. And this video is gonna be about the way that I've been eating lately, how it's been affecting me, and how it could possibly help you. So I started it in February and I've been adhering to it about 90, 95%. I really love sharing things that work for me. So if I find something and it works, I wanna tell everybody about it in case it's gonna help you too because I'm always sifting through information and you never know if it's good information or bad information until you try it out yourself or you hear from somebody else who's tried it out and find out that it's crap or that it works really well. I also have linked some additional resources down below in case you wanna do some further reading on your own or find out more about it if you actually are interested in the blood type diet. If you don't give a crap, then disregard the stuff in the description box. I do wanna go ahead and put this disclaimer out there though. I am not a dietitian. I'm not a licensed nutritionist. I have not gotten a degree in nutrition. I have studied it on my own. And so everything that I talk about in this video is either from books that I've read, things I've read online, or my personal experiences, or experiences from people I've worked with as my clients, or family members, or friends. So please don't think that I'm trying to tell you that this is something you need to do in your life, or that you're wrong if you don't do this. I am just putting information out there. Do with it as you will. With that being said, I hate diet. I hate restrictive eating. I hate working my ass off and feeling like I'm not losing weight or I'm not getting results. I hate, or I'm not losing fat. I hate working toward a goal and not feeling like I'm making progress even though I know I'm working hard toward that goal. I hate eating clean and still being gassy. Is that just me? Am I the only one? Just me with the gas? That's cool. Now, with all that being said, let me tell you about this diet though. The blood type diet asserts that if you eat the foods that are best for you, then you'll have more energy, improve your metabolism, digestion, eliminate and prevent illnesses, and lose weight. I know! Hold up though, there's more. According to your blood type, there are certain foods that are medicinal for you, which means they act like medicine for your body. There are foods that are neutral, which means that they're nutritionally good for you, but not particularly medicinal or harmful. If something is medicinal, it has the ability to heal you, make you feel a lot better, help to fight conditions, illnesses, build your immune system up. If it's just neutral, it means it's got vitamins and minerals and stuff that you would get from food and that's what it is, it's food. You put it into your body for fuel and boom. And then there are the avoid foods, which tend to cause negative effects, have negative reactions or unwanted reactions in the body like bloating, gas, insulin resistance, cramps, diarrhea, throwing up, you know, bad stuff happening in your body that you don't want to happen all the time or at all for that matter. Each blood type has its own food list outlining what is or isn't appropriate for you to eat based on your food type, whether you're O, A, B, or AB. There are four different blood types. If you don't know your blood type, you can give blood and they can tell you what it is, or you can go to your general doctor and they can look at your record and tell you what your blood type is. You can also send in for a blood type test, I'm pretty sure, like if you go to thebloodtypediet.com, it's not called thebloodtypediet.com, but in Google, you can, I'm sure that you can send out and order a blood test to see what kind of, what blood type you are. Whether or not you're interested in the blood type diet, the healthier you are, the better your body will adapt and respond to stimuli like exercise. When your body is functioning optimally, you're healthy, you're feeling good, your stuff's all in line, your body is then able to focus on the adaptations that allow you to get leaner, stronger, build more muscle, your waist to get smaller, your butt to get bigger. Those are all adaptations. When your health is on point and the inside of your body is happy, <laughs> for lack of a better term, your body reacts a lot better, a lot more efficiently to the things that you do to it. So if you're currently working out and you're eating like crap, you're not gonna get as good of results as if you eat really well and work out because then you're giving your body all the stuff that it needs to get those results that you're going for. Yeah, you can get results working out and not eating great, depending on your genetics. I mean, your body's going to adapt when you put it under stress. However, you will find greater adaptations if you optimize your health. Now, let me tell you, I am not a fan of cutting out food groups. 
I do believe in moderation, so I've always hated diets or things where they're like, cut out this whole food group, don't eat any of this food group. That kind of freaks me out a little bit, and I feel like that leads you to be neurotic and can cause psychological issues with food. I have been there before, so I'm speaking from experience. How? Ever. If you have a food sensitivity or a food intolerance like lactose intolerance or celiac, celiac, celiac disease, where you cannot digest gluten, it prevents you from actually being able to absorb the nutrients and vitamins from the other foods you're eating that you don't have sensitivities to. It just completely destroys your microbiome if you're sensitive to gluten and causes inflammation. Food sensitivities cause inflammation in your body. Inflammation is one of the factors that causes illnesses and less than desirable conditions. So if you do have a food allergy like lactose intolerance, which means you cannot tolerate the sugars that are in milk, or you're gluten sensitive, then cutting out a food group might actually be beneficial. What? You know, as far as I'm concerned on the blood type diet, for O blood type, you're supposed to eat meat every day and bison and beef, red meat are medicinal for me. And I was like, huh? Like that can't be right. Red meat clogs your arteries. You know, you're supposed to limit your red meat consumption. The other thing that the blood type diet said to do was to limit and eventually cut out altogether dairy and grains. And I was like, uh, no. You can't make cake without milk and grain flour. <laughs> can't make cake without milk and flour, people. Well, I don't know if it needs milk, but you can't make cake without flour. It's not, and if you do, it's not gonna be worth it. Can't call that cake. Like I said, I'm not a fan of cutting out food groups from my diet, but I was miserable. I was diagnosed with IBSD, and it was worth a freaking try to just to try something that I hadn't tried yet. So I cut out gluten and dairy, and I focused on eating grass-fed, hormone, and antibiotic-free meat. And then I also focused on eating mostly my medicinal foods and my neutral foods, and I gradually cut down on the foods on my avoid list. I didn't just jump right into it and cut everything out that it said to avoid because then it can shock your body. My skin ended up clearing up in a couple of weeks. Like it was crazy. I mean, my skin's not terribly bad. I did have acne as a teenager pretty badly. And now I've noticed that, you know, when I eat a lot of sugar, my face will break out and stuff like that around my period. But now that I'm following the guidelines of the blood type diet, my skin is so much more clear. I don't have as many breakouts. Even on my period, I don't break out like I used to. I'm happier, like my mood has increased. I just feel better, which is insane. But your gut health is actually directly related to your mood. And the blood type diet is, honestly, it's kind of like a sensitivity diet. It just kind of helps to, somebody already went out there and did the research and found out what foods affect which blood types and how they affect them and what happens and someone already did the hard work for you so I didn't think I had anything to lose. Oh I also lost about I mean I want to say like it was probably like seven six seven pounds of fat my weight went um, I was about I was really holding steady at about 135 ish I would go up and down from there and once uh, I got into the blood type diet, I actually went down to 128 in like the late 120s, early 130s. And I just definitely noticed that even though my weight honestly didn't change that much, I noticed that my physique was a lot leaner. I had more tone and muscle definition. I definitely had more energy in the gym. I've been able to push more and get more into calisthenics because before I, I don't know, it was just more challenging. I feel like I've, I've had more strength and I've just, my workouts have gotten better. It's crazy. The, my body's changing, my workouts are changing. I feel better. It's awesome. I'm, I love the blood type diet. Anyway, I also don't follow it 100%, like I mentioned in the beginning, as I still eat candy, which usually is made from corn syrup and corn, corn and corn syrup are all on my avoid list. I try not to get super, super, super neurotic where I'm just cutting out everything that I love because life's not worth living if you are just miserable. I don't want to be miserable to look good. I want to enjoy my life and look good while I'm enjoying my life. One more point that I wanted to make is that a lot of conditions, a lot of conditions develop later in life. So even if you're healthy now or you seem fine, you can eat a whole cake by yourself and it's not that big of a deal. 
because I used to do that kind of stuff. Like I used to eat insane amounts of sugar. I cannot even tell you. Like I would get a Starbucks coffee and put seven sugar packs in it. Damn! And even then I was like, eh. Like it was, it was pretty bad. Yeah, when I was a teenager, I mean, there weren't really any effects from that, but when you continue those types of behaviors throughout your life, eventually it's going to have an effect on your body. Sugar breaks down your collagen, it causes wrinkles, like it does all kinds of stuff, it causes inflammation. I mean, it also makes you fat, obviously. So the blood type diet, even if you don't have conditions that you need to fix, eating healthily prevents those conditions from developing later on in life. And while I thought that I was eating clean before, I it kind of blew my mind with the blood type diet because I always did put an emphasis on eating healthy and I thought I was eating really clean. You can't set out a blueprint, like a diet blueprint and say, hey, this is what works for everybody because everybody's body is different. Like I said, if you're interested in learning more, I've linked some resources down below. If you have any questions or you want me to make another video about this or go more in depth, please leave a comment below and let me know. I can talk about this all day. <laughs> this video is already long enough though, so I'm gonna cut it off here. Thank you so much if you've made it to this point in the video. I really appreciate it. I know that I was talking a lot. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. If you did learn something or you liked the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you are not already subscribed, consider subscribing. I put out videos every week. Hopefully it'll be more videos a week in the future. Until next time, I'll see you guys soon. Mwah.